Um, looking back on the two games against Denmark, first of all, Andy, the the under twenty three program, a, a brand new addition uh, to kind of restart the the England setup. How was how the under twenty three has come about? Well, basically, um, Gary came to us and mentioned about trying to start kicks out something for players who um, after twenties there's nothing really for them, um, and he mentioned about the twenty threes. Um, obviously, then the team was made. Um, we, we found out to all the players that were available. They came down for a trial, put themselves through vigorous trials for the full day, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really enjoyable day. Um, and now it started, and hopefully it's going to carry on now. And Paul, the, the, the chance to, to coach England had obviously a, a big plus for yourself and great to be involved. Yeah, it, it, Andy gave me a call and would I be interested in didn't take me long to make a decision to be honest. And I know it's like working with Andy and, and the other guys that, that he was mentioning. Yeah, it, it's really great. And I'm, you know, working for England and like the trials father has on the ice trying to pick up other guys to make a team up. And uh, I think the highlight of it for me was when I saw all the guys stood there facing the flag at the national anthem. That, that, that was, that was, yeah, that was pivotal, that was. Yeah. So, yeah, really, 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 really great experience in, 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 in that. But from the coach's point of view, you know, we had obviously we had Gloss, we had Matt Bradbury, yeah. we had uh, Mikey Gilbert, um, you know, and then we had my, uh, Mike Fletcher um, of the two days. David Lawrence, goalie coach, good daily fancy goals, as well, fantastic blokes, yeah. um, and then we had a good buy-in from like Mike Saunders oh, yeah. and some of the other coaches from the the Power Tens twelve sessions. They stayed on, so it was a good day, good core of coaches, and it was the deliverance was fantastic. Yeah, I think that, that was the biggest key. It was like you know, people like head coaches, and assistant coaches, a bit. We all just worked together, didn't yeah, we? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Very hard playing against Denmark, as everybody probably mm. saw. But we're all working together to yeah. work out a system and changing the system to try and do the best we possibly could to keep that score line down. And, and in areas it worked, didn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, but that was the input from everybody, and I think that was the biggest key about the whole situation. Mm. And the progression from the Thursday to the Friday was it was it was great. You know, the Thursday in witness, the you know we, we set our plan out to how we was going to try and close them down and it worked you know the first pain was a bit shocking wasn't it but they, the shot from the Denmark team covered at us because we didn't know what we was looking at no. and then the second period it was just an absolute break. yeah it was, it was really weird fantastic. We, we, obviously we got to get to the rink and you're, and you're watching them train all the guys and the guys like they're not only big but they can also shoot the puck like a bullet uh, but you know we always knew that was going to happen but the first period obviously was a 5-1 period you know we got away with a a lucky goal, I'd say, was a, a bit offside. But uh, we regrouped in that second period. I think for 17 minutes, we held them at 0-0 yeah, yeah, for 17 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. That's a huge plus, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. And, you know, OK, a smaller rink. I'm not saying it worked to our advantage because we still lost the game. Mm. But that smaller rink just gave you time to mm. re-route and regroup yeah, into absolutely. it. Uh, and that was, I think that was a buy-in from the players as well. Was that these group of players, they just brought into everything, you know, a system change, a line change, and so on and so forth. And, yeah, you're in that situation where you're... You know, you're up against it, or must have defended yep. for 95%. Mm. But they just kept working and working. They worked for working. a full 60, didn't they? Worked they didn't for a full 60. They did not stop, and yeah. that's, all you, that's all you can ask for. Yeah. yeah. And to give the players that opportunity, obviously, we had different squads over the two nights we had. Yeah. You had a chance to get as many players at the opportunity as possible. And it's the, this, as, as you said at the top, the, given this, this, this age group the opportunity to, to keep playing beyond. What was a, a kind of an artificial ceiling almost at under twenties, yeah. and they've still yeah. got something to, to go for and play for. The the, the feedback <clears throat> that we've had from the players um, after the games was that well, let's talk about the start of the games. We got to the rink and they were so enthusiastic. They were just they were in awe of everything, weren't they? They were, they were just buzzing. They were, we was having team discussions. You know, was having laughs, was having jokes with them. We was telling them where, what we need to do, what we was looking at, how we was going to change it. We was talking to the captains, the assistants. And we had boards literally all over the change room. Like like boards, 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 boards everywhere. And we were just going through all set players, set players what we wanted to do. And the players just bought into it. They absolutely bought into it. Came here on the Friday, exactly the same sort of concept, full day. Um, the goalies had the sessions in the morning. And it just worked an absolute treat, didn't it? Yeah, I think that the big thing was, I mean, you know, me and Andy had spoken, spoke to Gary about, you know, what they were on. I said the first thing I wanted to make them feel, you know, a big part of it. So you know, the stick takes brought in, the foods all brought in, leg tape, whatever we call it, but equipment guys as yeah. well on the, on the Friday one. Yeah, S and C blokes. S and C blokes in there and girls as well. Yeah. You know, we'd got you know Sheffield Steelers and equipment manager come down on the Friday. Yeah. So really, you wanted to be as professional as you possibly could to make so when they walked walked in that locker room, mm -hmm. they felt all I've got to do is 
church. We had Neil Kiffin there. on the Thursday. He did, he did all the skate grinding and sorting yeah. out the kit and stuff Absolutely, like that. Yeah. And he did yeah. a fantastic job. Um, the kids just, they were in awe of it all, really, weren't they? The to be fair, they were, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of young kids in there. I mean, you know, it's interesting about that, that gap. To be fair, to, you know, I mentioned names, but there's two or three of those guys that were looking at quitting the sport. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, to be picked, they were like, really? I've been picked? Yeah, you've been picked. You've turned up for trial. You're selected. And then they've gone out there, they've played against a top 10 nation, I think a few NHL draft picks in there, I think San Jose and somebody else, and a couple of KHL players. Um, and they competed as best they possibly could. And they came out of there, one was really emotional to be fair to yeah. And they just thanked us and couldn't thank it. And you know, there's a couple of guys in that locker room, one of them, uh, Sam Russell, he's played at a, he plays a good level. Sam, Sam, does, Sam was fantastic. He's a fantastic for the, captain. For fantastic captain. Fantastic. Um, and you, even the assistants, even the, the whole of, the whole lot of the players was just fantastic. But Sam himself was just, he was a true leader. And you can see from where the, the, the kids played from. Um, but he was great with the guys. His communication, his deliverance to the players was just a first class. And it was, and that's all you can ask for. And that's all you can ask for out of all these players. But as I said, some of these players, you know, there was a few going to a wedding on the Friday. <laughs> um, and after the game on the Thursday, they said, can we play on the Friday? And I said, well, you can't, you're going to a wedding. Well, well hang on, I would maybe change the mm -hmm. wedding and stuff. And it was his wedding as well. Yeah, no, and he was <laughs> um, so enthusiastic. And that's, for us, that's all we wanted. For a development side, um, looking to help players develop and retain, like we say, this is what it's all about, the retain factor. Um, but giving these guys as much opportunity as they can. And they all said exactly the same we would never ever get this experience again. The experience that we've had is golden and we'll take that away now. We'll yeah. really remember this. And from the, the England setup as a, as a whole, obviously it's, it's restart of the England program, which has been dormant since obviously things happened mm. in, in 2020. Um, it's kind of the last thing to get to get restarted. We're here at the showcase. Yeah. You've got the England program now is the last thing to, to reboot. So obviously from the, from the showcase weekend, we're gonna end of May, we're going to Dumfries. Um, and we're going to play um, Scotland. Uh, so there's going to be a 15 England 15s, North and South, and an England 15s, North, South 17s. Uh, and they're going to play against Scotland. Uh, it's just going to be a three way tournament over the weekend. And we're selecting players from this tournament. Uh, we're also selecting coaches and managers from this tournament. Um, and it's, it, once again, it's a development from this tournament. It's basically giving back to the kids to say, you've done really well this, week, this weekend. This is what else is an extra for you. And it's more competitive games, and that's all I want to play. Yeah. And then looking to restart the programme as a whole. Well, obviously, before COVID, the, the England programme was fairly well established and, and fairly well developed. So looking to, to restart that with your full yeah. full set of England teams. So we're looking for, to go for 13s, 14s, 15s. Um, obviously, you've got your 17s, 19s, which is going to be something different. Uh, that's one of something what we want to engage into. And then obviously, you've got your 23s with this guy here. Okay. But it's it's coming together. It's going to take a while. It's going to be. It's not just an easy fix. We're gonna. It's going to be struggles, but we will get there eventually. And with the team that we've got and the people on the board and stuff, who have been really supportive, we will get there. And the ENT people will go back to where it was. And the 23s will still be the the flagship at the top of the program. Yeah, absolutely. Leaving there. We're still going to continue doing that for next season. Uh, we thought it was a huge success, didn't we? Uh, we got so much from it. Um, you know, it, there was a, there was apprehension there, weren't there at first? Because it was it was it was a short term thing, but when you look at the long term after it's all finished and stuff, that it's just it was in awe of everything. The, the, the players, the structure that we put in, and the deliverance from everybody was just just first class. And then obviously we didn't mention, but obviously the weekend after, um, we're going to be running the 11s and 13s in Scotland. They're going to do exactly what the 15s and 17s are doing. Yeah, so it's still. A a busy old time in there, so and then obviously coming back. Hopefully, then start kick out, kick starting the actual ENTP during the summer. I think the thing is, I spoke to obviously at the hotel at the moment with the showcase, but um, <coughs> excuse me, um, a couple of players who obviously uh, are coming out of their you know their twenties experience, and I said that it's really good that it's a twenty threes program because a lot of good guys are under twenties, mm -hmm. you know, that have got there. There's a big gap between that and the seniors, um, and their concern was well. How am I going to get to the senior hockey because I'm only like 19 years of age? Mm. So now with the you know the 23s in there and how it's going to be structured and so on and so forth, they've got a little bit more of a pathway mm -hmm. and they've got a little bit more hope in there to mm. see that you know by the time I get to 22, 23, okay, then I might be even looked at even more as well as yeah. getting get on you know playing at national national league level and then maybe get on a two way elite league as well. Mm. Um, and I think it's really important that you know to play international teams. 
that's what they need to do. They need to play with this quality. But obviously Denmark was a, as I say, it's a high end nation. It's a top yeah. ten international. We were a home nation, mm. um, so you know we could only pick within the, 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 the system of England as opposed to outreach and so and so forth. But when you start to look at you know Dan as well, you know the, the, the other age groups com coming up. It's really, really, really good players coming through that system. You only have to look at the the, thing, sure, yeah. the, the showcase this weekend. It's been fantastic. Um, the games have been real competitive. Yeah. That's what everybody wants. Yeah. Very close, feisty games. <laughs> um, but that's what you want to see at these age. And you know, it's the, the, I think since COVID and we've come back with the league structure, we've come back with this and starting a bit of England and stuff. That's the path where we wanted to go to, and that's what we've delivered. So you know, it's fantastic, the and big, we'll just move forward now. The yeah. biggest thing, I mean. It's not just what you learn on the ice, it's what you learn off the ice. Mm -hmm. And from Denmark was a, was a real learning curve, mm -hmm. talking to the way they operate and the way their system operates mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And their biggest thing that they work on is fitness. Mm -hmm. They are athletes first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, they're good hockey players, but they're going to be hockey players because of their sheer fitness. Mm -hmm. They're in the gym, and when they go to the gym, they go to the gym for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's important. I think so that's something that I know that you know we're well, we're looking at the S and C and the, the organisation. No, that's what they've been doing this weekend. Doing this weekend they, is testing, and yeah. that'll carry on going all the way forward now. And it could come down even further down the well, come down the junior level as well, mm -hmm. won't it? Because we need athletes. It's really, really important. I think there. the baseline testing is huge for for us as a, a as, as a junior program, as an ENTP, as to go to seniors. You know, we need to get this data for all these players. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we continue getting the data and see how the, the, the players are progressing throughout the year. Absolutely. The more data we get, the better we're going to be. Yeah. Excellent. Well, it's been a good first first foot for the for the new programme. Wish you well for the tournaments ahead, and then we'll see how it kicks in the summer. But uh, Andy and Gloss, thank you for your time thank and uh, all the best. Much, great. Cheers. Thank you.